Hi, in this video I will explain how addition, in other words, sense of hearing, allows you to detect and differentiate among various sounds. Sense of hearing is associated with ears, so let's look at ear anatomy before understanding how hearing works. Ear is divided into three main areas, external ear, middle ear, and inner ear. External ear is composed of auricle, a C-shaped large structure made up of cartilage, ear canal, also known as external auditory canal, and tympanic membrane, also known as eardrum. Middle ear is connected to the pharynx through a stachian tube, which helps equilibrate air pressure across the tympanic membrane. This tube is normally closed, but will pop open when the muscles of the pharynx contract during yawning or swallowing. Middle ear is also composed of three tiny bones collectively called ossicles. Malleus attached to the tympanic membrane and articulates with incus, which articulates with stapes. Inner ear is composed of cochlea and vestibule. Vestibule is responsible for balance, but this is covered in separate video. Finally, there are two openings from the middle ear to the inner ear, oval window to which stapes is attached and round window right underneath. Now let's look at the process of hearing. Auricle collects sound waves from the environment and passes it along the ear canal. Sound then strikes tympanic membrane, making it vibrate. Vibrations of tympanic membrane are transmitted along three ossicles, malleus, incus, and then stapes. From stapes, sound vibrations are picked up by oval window and moved to cochlea, where sound vibrations are converted into neural signal, which then travels along the cochleal nerve, also known as auditory nerve, to the brain for interpretation. Let's look into details as to how sound vibrations are converted into nerve impulses in the cochlea. When you take the cochlea and unfold it, inside you will find fluid-filled tube called scala vestibuli, which extends from the oval window to the tip of cochlea, where it becomes scala tympani, which extends from the tip of the cochlea to the round window. In the middle, you will find cochleal duct, which is the central cavity of cochlea that contains basilar membrane, organ of corti, which is composed of hair cells, stereocilia, and tectoral membrane, onto which stereocilia are attached and arranged from the tallest to the shortest member. Each hair cell is attached to the auditory nerve. As vibrations of the ossicles travel through the oval window, the fluid of scala vestibuli and scala tympani move in a wave-like motion. Keep in mind that the frequency of fluid waves matches the frequency of sound waves. Fluid waves of scala vestibuli and scala tympani cause basilar membrane to move at a specific location depending on the frequency of waves. Such as higher frequency waves move area of basilar membrane that is close to the base of cochlea, whereas lower frequency waves move area of basilar membrane that is near the tip of the cochlea. Movement of basilar membrane causes tectorial membrane to slide across stereocilia. This bends stereocilia either towards or away from the tallest member of each group. When the stereocilia bends towards tallest member of each group, ion channels located in hair cell membrane open up and causes the membrane to depolarize. This triggers nerve impulses that travel down auditory nerves to the brain. However, when the stereocilia bends towards shortest member of each group, ion channels close. Keep in mind that when sound is not present, there is still a small amount of tension keeping the membrane potential of each hair cell slightly depolarized. Also, keep in mind that tectorial membrane only moves where the basilar membrane moves, and so only hair cells in this area will respond to sounds of this specific frequency. As the frequency sound changes, different hair cells are activated along the basilar membrane. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos and find them educational.